wonder they say that artillery is the god of war. Starting from the 19th century, it was this god that decided the outcome of battles. Starting from the middle of the 20th century, when nuclear weapons appeared, the rules of the game should have changed, or so it would seem. But fortunately, the use of nuclear weapons is prevented by common sense. And still, artillery plays a decisive role in all local conflicts, in which, alas, there is no shortage. And in this regard, it is interesting which artillery systems can be used by the most powerful army in the world, the US Army, to sweep their enemies off the battlefield. After the Second World War, the United States focused on the development of cannon artillery, capable of using nuclear warheads. For this, howitzers of 155 and 203 mm calibers were created and rocket artillery systems, so effectively used by the Russians in World War II for some reason, were considered by American generals to be outdated and ineffective weapons. The Arab-Israeli conflict in 1973 forced the U.S. military to change their mind. In this conflict, the Arab armies used the Soviet Grad MLRS. The Egyptian artillery attack, which began at 1400 on October 6th, lasted 53 minutes. During this time, more than 3,000 tons of ammunition were fired from 2,000 gun barrels and rocket launchers. The intensity of the fire was 175 rounds per second. Thanks to this, the Egyptians were able to cross the Suez Canal quickly and without loss. This forced Israel to accelerate the development of their own MLRS and have been doing so since the 60s. And in the same 1973, the Israeli four-charger MLRS Mar 290 caliber 290mm was put into service. The United States took up the intense development of their rocket artillery as well. The US military were also impressed with the performance of the Russian Grad MLRS. Its 122mm rockets fired from 40 rails literally plowed through thousands of square feet of battlefield in a minute. And in 1975, the USSR got an even more powerful system, Smirch. In addition, more than three-fold superiority in tanks of the USSR and its allies over NATO countries was estimated. How to stop such an armada? The final decision on the MLRS creation program was made in 1976. Since then, more than $5 billion has been spent on the design stage, testing, preparation for mass production, and serial deliveries to the U.S. Army. Lockheed Martin Missiles and Fire Control, a subsidiary of the famous Lockheed Martin, was chosen as the lead contractor for the project. And this first American system, which received the name M270 MLRS, Multiple Launch Rocket System, has entered service in 1983. This artillery system turned out to be so successful that the abbreviation MLRS itself became a common term in NATO countries. It denotes all systems belonging to this class. Let's take a closer look at this weapon masterpiece. The M270 combat vehicle is a tracked platform with an artillery unit mounted on it. The chassis of the units is unified with the BMP M2 Bradley, which simplifies operation and provides high performance. The chassis is represented by six base rollers and two support rollers on each side. The thrust rollers are the front ones. Thanks to the use of a track chassis, the multiple launch rocket system received the same mobility and maneuverability as the BMP in the M1 main battle tank, as well as the ability to move freely over a rough terrain. This is very important as it allows the M270 to move in the thick of troops and support them with its fire in any situation. By the way, all Russian MLRS are made on wheels, so they're inferior to American weapons in all-terrain capability. At the same time, the speed of the American vehicle on the highway is only 10 km per hour slower than the Russian version, 65 km per hour versus 75 km per hour. But on a rough terrain, the M270 goes at a speed of 48 km per hour. This is the highest speed for vehicles of this class, but the main feature of the M270 MLRS is its artillery unit. Unlike all other MLRS, the American version does not have a package of guides for launching rockets. Instead, the M269 Loader Launcher Module LLM, is used. It is made in the form of an armored box with slots for two rocket pods. To install the latter, the M269 has its own reloading mechanism. Due to this mechanism, the pods with missiles can be received from any transport vehicle. The assembly of the pods is carried out at the factory. It is there that rockets are placed inside, and the process of sealing the container takes place. The shells can be stored for 10 years in such pods. Due to the factory installation of missiles, which are then loaded in the M270, and not one by one, the time of its reloading, aiming, and salvo with 12 227mm shells from two launch containers of the installation is only 5 minutes. The time of the salvo itself is 48 seconds. This is still unsurpassed by anyone. 
For example, the Russian Grad reloads with its 122mm shells in 7 minutes, and the more powerful Smirch, which uses 300mm shells, takes 13 minutes. There's no need to describe how the combat power is affected by the reload time. But the use of transport and launch pods not only minimizes this most important indicator, but also provides designers with huge opportunities for modernization. With one volley of 12 227mm rockets, an area of 25,000 square meters is effective. That's two and a half baseball fields. Such a strike on the target is equivalent to firing from 33 artillery pieces of 155mm caliber. The maximum firing range of these shells is 40 kilometers. Today, each launcher is serviced by two transport loading vehicles at once. These are all-terrain 10-ton trucks M985 with a wheel arrangement of 8x8 or newer M1075 with 10x10. Each of these machines can be equipped with a trailer. Up to eight transport and launch containers can be transported on each vehicle with a trailer. Thus, for each launch, there are 108 shells, 48 per transport loading vehicles, and 12 already in the launcher. The launch loading module M269 has a significant internal volume and not only TPK for 227mm rockets can be installed into it. For example, the designers managed to place two operational tactical missiles, MGM-140 Attack MS, of 610m caliber, 4 meters long and 80km range there. The presence of such ammunition has dramatically expanded the range of MLRS tasks to be solved, and also transferred it to another class of equipment. This is operational tactical weapons. The upgraded MGM-140B missile already has a range of 165 kilometers. The newest missile in the line is the MGM 160A Block IBA. It carries a 227 kg unitary high explosive fragmentation warhead and has a guidance system from the MGM 140B. The range has been increased to 270 km. In the near future, Raytheon and Lockheed Martin plan to launch flight tests of a new missile, now called PRSM Precision Strike Missile. In connection with the U.S. withdrawal from the INF Treaty, the possibility of reworking this project in order to increase the firing range is not ruled out. The 500km range set for the LPRF-PRSM were due to the limitations of that agreement, now defunct. According to reports, new launchers will not be developed for PRSM. Such weapons will be used on platforms in the form of the M270 MLRS. This artillery system has a tilting cab for an access to the 500-horsepower Cummins VTA-903 eight-cylinder diesel engine. This engine provides this combat vehicle weighing almost 25 tons, with the ability to move on the highway at speeds up to 64 km per hour. The maximum all-terrain speed is 48 km per hour. The designers place two fuel tanks with a total capacity of 618 liters in the stern of the vehicle, under the base plate of the artillery unit. The fuel supply is enough to overcome a highway up to 485 km long. The system is air transportable. This 25-ton M270 MLRS can be airlifted using military transport aircraft, C-141, C-5, and C-17. In addition to high all-terrain ability and mobility, the launcher received more armor. In particular, the three-seats cabin located in front of the M993 cargo carrier is fully armored and also equipped with ventilation, heating, and soundproofing systems. There's a hatch in the roof, which can be used for both ventilation and for emergency evacuation of the vehicle. Cabin windows are equipped with bulletproof glass and can be closed with armored shutters. In the cockpit, there are seats for three people, the driver, the commander of the launcher, and the operator gunner. The combat debut of the American multiple launch rocket system was the operation of the multinational forces during the first Gulf War. The installations were massively used during Operation Desert Storm in 1991. Up to 230 launchers were used, with the UK deploying 16 more. They fired almost 10,000 unguided rockets with cluster warheads at Iraqi artillery positions, air defense, groups of armored vehicles, and helipads. In addition, at least 32 MGM-148 tactical ballistic missiles were fired at Iraqi positions. The M270 MLRS became the only field artillery system that could be effectively used in conjunction with Abrams tanks and Bradley infantry fighting vehicles, as well as interact with American tactical aircraft, which transmitted actual information about the objects and movements of Iraqi troops. Despite its considerable age, the M270 MLRS retains high performance and will receive new features in the near future. Thanks to this, the U.S. Army gets the opportunity to continue operating these slightly outdated vehicles without any loss in performance. Of course, over time, the M270 will have to give way to newer designs, but for now, this remains a matter of the distant future. The MLRS will remain in the military in the coming years.